I'm gonna be calling CH Transport here. Apparently they want me to get them, give them a call because they got a lot of negative Google reviews. It's funny how I spent four hours on the phone just trying to get a hold of somebody to track this package, but now that they got a few negative Google reviews, suddenly the general manager wants to talk to me immediately about this shipment. What are we doing right now? Chasing the track. And what's he got? He's got our stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's got our headache rack. So we are in Sorrento running, I don't know, an intercept? Watching him for him to come down the highway and then we're gonna follow him and make sure that he makes it to Merritt. If this guy tries to stop and count us or something, I'll be shaking his truck and making sure he doesn't sleep here. We got his tracker on this map here. We are pulled over at this gas station right there and he is coming up behind us here. Oh, we got guys moving over. Now, we're underneath the bridge. We were very clear that this is an important time delivery. That, that was one of the very things that we were adamant on, is that the time was of the essence. Flowdrolic worked tons of overtime hours to get this thing done. We now have to, like, I have to bring all my staff in at multiple overtime hours. This thing should have been here four days ago. It's an important piece of a multi-million dollar piece of equipment that needs to be delivered in three weeks now. We were not told, like you just gave the load out to some random trucking company. That is what we are really, really angry about. We hired you to move it. Not, I did not hire AutoLogic. That guy broke down for four or five days with an important piece of equipment. I would have sent another truck. I would have had a, a tow truck pin onto it. I would have sent my own truck for it. Like if this was that much of a nightmare, I would have sent my own Kenworth out. Like, that is the ridiculous part of this whole thing, is that when we, Flo Drolic paid 4000 whatever, and then turns around and hires a guy for half the cost. Like, how, how do you explain hiring a guy for half the cost? We just followed him from Sorrento, and we're in Canloops. Uh, right yeah. in front of us. That's him right there. Make sure he doesn't have any stops to make. We're going to follow him right to Edison Motors. If he gets lost, we're going to help him out. Show him where to turn around, back up, and just uh, pilot this load. This piece is so critically important to our business to make it here in time that it, it could end up costing us $7 million. If this piece in lost contract, if this piece is not here, the, the, the frustrating part is that I spent three, four hours tracking this thing down and I was lied to by your guys several times. That's what ticked me off is that I called your dispatch a couple times. It was supposed to, this part was supposed to arrive first thing Monday morning. And then I called on Monday afternoon and said, where is he? Oh, he should be there tomorrow. Okay, phone Tuesday. Oh, he should be there any, any minute now. The driver will give you a heads up. Call Wednesday. Oh, well, he still broke down. And finally, after like three, four hours of on the phone with your guy, that finally got the number, found out who that the load was contracted out, bid out to somebody else, and that the guy was broke down for four days. Like, that is what really, really just made me so angry is that all of a sudden like oh well your guy didn't care about this part or didn't give relay the information didn't put any post haste on it and it's when i complain online and say that hey ch lost his part because when i made that video we didn't know where this thing was i didn't know where it was i didn't know what was going on i didn't know where this critical million dollar piece of equipment had been that's that's not how that works like i have a trucking company we are a trucking company that's what we started before we started Edison Motors. But like, if somebody calls me and says, hey, I need you to low bed this buncher up to site here, I don't then just call around and find somebody else to do it for way less and then give them the load. If they hire me, my truck goes up and moves that equip piece of equipment. We haul logs. Like I, Someone calls me, like a warehouser calls me, and yeah, we need a logging truck or a low bed. I don't just start posting around trying to find another truck to move the freight for me. You call me you get my truck to move it. So when we called you, we were expecting your truck to move it. Not, if, if I wanted some random cut rate company, I know there's load boards. I could go on DAT and I could have posted the load on DAT and we could have found some cut rate company if we didn't care about the load, it didn't mean a big deal. I would have just posted it on a load board and I would have found the, the cheapest company that could possibly move it. But that's not what, what you do like why would i phone somebody else to broker out a load for us or why would why would we get somebody else to do it we could have brokered our own load 
And well, and the thing is though, even though it, we said no unloading, reloading, I talked to the driver that's been hauling this truck and they've been unloading and reloading this trailer across Western Canada. Like he just went up to, went from Calgary, went up to Edmonton, unloaded, reloaded. We're going back down to Calgary today. So this truck is going all over the place doing multiple unloads and reloads, which is exactly what we said we didn't want. So now your truck ha is unloading and reloading this truck. Like I talked to the driver of your truck that you hired and they're unloading and reloading this thing. They're unloading, dropping things here and putting things here. And like now we're incredibly worried because you got to come in real close to this real tight, swing around. And then you've got to get that angle. It might take a time or two. It takes okay. me a time or two, and I do it. Every I'll stand day. on the corner of the truck here, just as an extra marker for you. Oh! Oh! Stop! The well, stress level is monumental. We actually had a meeting to prep everyone. No stupid questions. Stress level is max right now. That's looking real good. You can uh, you can cut cut hard. Let me go back as far as I can. Yeah, you're good. You're good there. You're all good. You're good. Dave. Straight back. So that the back end of uh, Dave can grab it. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Find out. Nice. Well. So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay. Be great. Get a check on you. This part's bent up. The forklift. Something's picked up on it, but uh, we'll, hey, we'll find out if we get her unloaded here. Here it comes. Yeah. That was stressful. That was very stressful. Okay, let's get that up. Okay, let's lower down under it. Okay, let's lower down. Lower down. Do you all clear? Okay, slowly come down. Don't knock. She stops. Go over the ride. You're gonna lift up the legs. That's what I put on my end. Down. Okay. You got his eye? Yeah, I got the control. How much have I got now? You're good. Now, we'll Commentary at the end of the day. We're tired. It's okay. late. We're getting it off. We're gonna check to see if there's damage in the morning. This is the last piece, last lift. Last piece, last lift. Well, all of this. Two and a half hours. So, uh, Commentary. We should buy a forklift. Commentary. And the pallet jack. Commentary. I mean, our, our engine hoist pallet jack seems to actually be working pretty good. I mean, it is working yeah, phenomenally. Yeah, this was a good idea. You gotta, you gotta have the automotive ingenuity to use it. Oh, we did it somehow. 
So what's the verdict? Well, we got everything here. It's late in the night. We're going to come back out here tomorrow, check out the condition, make sure nothing was damaged, everything's okay. It's here. Look at me, I'm driving a white Volvo. I'll be honest, this is my first time ever driving an automatic. I am not a fan of not having a clutch. All right, well, thank you very much. Well, that was needlessly stressful, but everything got here, nothing is broken. So all in all, it ended up really good, even though it probably shaved five years off my life. <laughs> I'm just glad it got here without anything being damaged or anything. Also, really friendly driver. Like none of this, I gotta emphasize, was the truck driver's fault. He was a really nice guy, super polite, super helpful, just all around great guy. So do not say anything about the driver. It's not him, it's on the companies involved in the background. One of the things we learned when we start production, we need a loading bay and a forklift. Dear exactly. God, life would have been so much easier exactly. to unload this if we had a forklift. Like, using a backhoe and slinging, like, I am pretty sure we have the only electric truck where the components are being unloaded and handled with a backhoe from the 90s and a crane truck from the 1960s. Like, I mean, we get it done, but, we could definitely upgrade our production facility and things would, if, if, honestly, if we had a better production facility, we would shave like half of this time off of these builds. We're making do with what we got and that's what keeps us moving ahead. I think we're probably gonna look back on this in like two or three years, hopefully, and laugh. It'll be nice to look back on our humble beginnings. Look back on the humble beginnings, yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, everyone started. You look at all the big companies, Microsoft, Disney, Amazon all started in like a garage, a shop or whatever. And so it, it, it's just, you know, make do with what you got. I'm a firm believer is that like, yeah, we're not gonna spend the money right now on a massive loading facility and a massive forklift. And yeah, I know I could probably get a forklift attachments, but it's not a quick detach and that's a pain. But we're not gonna spend the money right now on a one-off build. We'll deal with the stress, the absolute nightmare, the 11 o'clock at night on loadings. But if we're building a bunch more trucks here next year, we're gonna need to, then that's the time to build it. Take what you need, use what you got, and expand and grow from there. Don't just raise a ton of, like we didn't raise a ton of money at the start to buy a forklift for one delivery. But we'll start looking at that once this truck is done and we're actually coming up with our production plan that we're working on now and see what we needed then. We got everything unboxed. Thank God there was nothing actually damaged. So that is a huge, huge relief. I think that's mainly in part due to flow hydraulic. They put everything in such skookum boxes that even despite them some damage to the box, nothing internally got damaged. But we got our headache rack here. We got the rest of our batteries here. We got our control systems here. So now it's going to be a mad dash to the finish line. And we got to figure out what to do with CH. They, CH Express is, like we talked to the company they hired. And we actually got the emails from them. They were hired at a less than truckload rate. They were not hired for what we specified. CH did not tell them this was an express delivery. This needed to go direct to merit. We did say, we told CH it's direct to merit. And they confirmed direct to merit. And then they pawned it off to another company without saying it was direct, without saying no offloads. They pawned it off to a cheap rate company, tried to make a bunch of bucks. And I think that is such a sketchy thing in that trucking industry. To hire somebody else, we hired them. Um, looking around, we, we, we asked for what we were asking for. Flowdraulic was adamant um, that this is direct. This is as soon as possible delivery. They gave us a quote and then they turned around for like half the price, less than half the price, and hired some random company that they could find to haul it the cheapest and hope we wouldn't notice. Like that is such a sketchy, sketchy thing to do. When we pay for direct delivery, state that it has to be direct all the way here. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, we had to pay a lot of overtime hours last night. I think they should be on there. Personally, I don't even think we should be having to pay for that delivery. They still want the full amount. I know what they pay the other company 
Why are we paying the full amount? They turned around, they hired another company for way less money. So why are we still paying? CH is still trying to send us a bill for the full amount. Like, I know you paid an other company less than half. Why am I paying you? You ripped us off, you scammed us, and you're still trying to collect the full amount? You should be paying us for all the overtime hours that we had to pull last night. Everyone was working till 11 o'clock last night. And everyone's going to have to pull a ton of over overtime hours to catch us back up again. And that is ridiculous. So we're going to see how this goes. It'll probably be an adventure as we call out shady trucking practices over the next couple months. So if you notice the uh, truck in there already has all its axles, we now have an extra axle. So what we're thinking is something like a service truck or a little medium duty wrecker. Like this is, we can do like a little medium duty single axle project, a little tow truck or a service truck. I think a Something like that would be cool because it could have like three phase par charging. We could put like a level three, level four fast charger. So like a tow truck could pull up to an electric vehicle, plug it in, restore it. Or a service truck could have like three phase power on site. Like you could run a, a full shop air compressor, full electric welder, little welding rig. I don't know, let, let me know in the comments what you want to see for a project truck with this that we can start tackling here once we're done this one. Like what should we do with this guy?